OK, so we're going to solve this problem. We've got an equation with some numbers with recurring decimals in, and we need to find the values of a, b, c, p, and q, where they're all going to be integers between 0 and 9 inclusive. And to get started on this problem, I would identify that the right-hand side is a single digit number plus a single digit number. So this restricts the size of a immediately. Actually, the biggest that the right-hand side could be would be 9.999 recurring plus 9.9 .9 recurring. So this would give us a total of 20. So that would give you a is 2. But if we actually had this, you'd have 20.000, where we've got recurring three zeros here. But this wouldn't actually be of the right form, so we'd need to have a is 2. But we'd also need a is 0. So this isn't going to work for... 20.000, and even if we try representing this as 19.999 recurring, going for a different representation, we still run into problems that we'd need a is 1, and we'd also need a is 9. So this rules out, then, anything from 2 and above for our value of a, so it's either going to be 0 or it's going to be 1. So we'll start with the case where a is 0. So when a is 0, and we'll come back to the case where a is 1 later on, we've basically got b point c a b with the recurring digits. So I'll start putting a line over our recurring digits rather than the two dots notation, but it just means the same thing there. And we've also got p point q p p recurring, and we've also got q point q recurring. And I'll write this as q point q q q recurring, just so that then we've got three recurring digits in each of the three numbers that we're adding together. So at this point, we can actually start to understand what's going on with the recurring digits part. So for example, forgetting about the p for now, let's just look at this one. If we had 0.qpp, let's call this one x. So the standard trick here is that you would multiply this by, that should all be recurring, you'd multiply it by 1,000, so then you'd get qpp point q pp all recurring, then you subtract one from the other, you get 999x is equal to just qpp, then all the recurring bits cancel with each other. And here if you divide through by 999, you get x is qpp over 999. And you can do something very similar for our 0 0.cab recurring term and also our 0 0.qqq recurring term, which transforms this equation now into, we've got b, the integer part, plus this will be C A B over 999. This is now equal to P plus Q P P over 999 plus Q plus and just Q Q Q over 999 there. And at this point, you'll spot that B is going to be equal to P plus Q in most cases. But the only other scenario we could have is potentially if these two fractional parts add up to a total greater than 1, then when we do the addition on the right-hand side, we'd end up carrying a 1. So you'd actually have B would be equal to P plus Q plus 1. And again, we rule out the case where we have 999 over 999, where P and Q are both equal to 9, because then we run into the problems that we had at the start. So we've got two different scenarios now in this scenario where A equals 0. We've either got the scenario where we have to carry a 1, so this is effectively saying that QPP plus QQQ, let's write this out, QPP plus QQQ, in order to get a 1 which we need to carry, this needs to be greater than or equal to 999 when we take this sum. And this is going to be the scenario where B is equal to carrying the 1, P plus Q plus 1. And if we compare this now to the other scenario where QPP plus Q, Q, Q is actually less than 999, so we don't carry a 1, so the integer parts are left alone, we just have P plus Q equals B, so B equals P plus Q, and we don't get a contribution, so the sum of these two fractional parts would just be equal to this fractional part on the left. So in this first case, because we know the relationship between B and P plus Q, we can actually get rid of the integer parts in this equation by, let's subtract p and q from both sides. We subtract p, we subtract q. So on the left-hand side, we've got b minus p minus q, which we know from this equation here, in this case, is just going to be 1. Or we'll write this as 999 over 999. So then when we've subtracted the p and q, we're just left with 999 over 999, and then all of the other fractional terms have the same denominator. 
So we can actually get rid of that denominator, giving us on the left-hand side 999 plus CAB equals QPP plus QQQ. And at this point, we'll start to think about what actually happens when we carry out each of these additions. So on the right-hand side, for example, when we carry out the addition with our ones column, we'll do P plus Q. And we know that P plus Q, this is going to be equal to B minus 1. And we know that B is at most 9, so this is actually at most 8. So when we do this addition with P plus Q, we aren't going to carry a 1 over. We just do P plus Q, and that's it. Whereas on the left-hand side, we've got 9 plus B when we do our addition for the 1's column. And we know that B is going to be at least 1 from this equation. B is P plus Q plus 1. And P and Q are both non-negative. So actually, we've got our 9 plus B on the left-hand side. 9 plus B is going to be at least 10. So we do carry a 1 on the left-hand side. And this gets really interesting now when we look at our 10's column. So here we've got 9 and A. And we actually know at this point that a is 0, so let's just replace our a by the number 0, remembering that this is just representing the digit, it's not c times 0 times b. And then on the right hand side we've got a p plus q here. So when we do this addition we've carried a 1 from the units column on the left hand side, so we've got 9 plus 0 plus that extra 1. This is going to have to be equivalent to the tens column here from having p plus q modulo 10. So it doesn't have to actually be equal to each other, they just have to be the same up to adding or subtracting a multiple of 10, and then we would still get the same thing in the tens column. But at this point you can see p plus q is equivalent to 10, or equivalent to 0 modulo 10. And we also know that p plus q is less than or equal to 8, so the only way that this is actually possible then, using integers p and q, is that p plus q equals 0. So this tells us that p is actually equal to 0, q is also equal to 0, and this causes us problems now because we're supposed to be in this case where qpp plus qqq is bigger than 999, but it's actually just 0, so we just have 0 on the right hand side. So this gives us actually a contradiction then, so in this first case there aren't any solutions to our problem. So what about this second case, where b is equal to p plus q, and we've got no carrying? Well, you can see here that immediately our b and p plus q terms are going to cancel with each other, then we're just left with our fraction terms, which have the common denominator of 999, which we can cancel as well. So we end up with cab equals qpp plus qqq. And remember here, we're in the case where a equals 0 for each of these subcases. So we can actually just replace our a by the digit 0 there. So now if we compare what's happening with our units column on the right hand side, we've got p plus q equals b, and there's not actually going to be any carrying when we do p plus q, because we know in this subcase that b is just equal to p plus q. So this means that we don't carry anything, and we're just left with this 0 here when we add our p plus q from the units column. And then if we compare the tens column, we get the scenario where p plus q is just going to be equal to 0. So we've got 0 equals p plus q as a result of our tens column there. And the only way of satisfying this with digits from 0 to 9 is just that p and q are both equal to 0. So we've actually just got 0 equals p equals q, and we're in a trivial solution then where you see everything on this right hand side is just going to be 0, so everything on the left hand side is also 0. So all of our digits there are just 0 in this second case where b is equal to p plus q. So now when a is 1, we'll again split up into these two different cases, depending on whether our fractional parts sum to something which is greater than 1, or sum to something which is less than 1, in which case we don't need to carry a 1. So now we have 1b, which really means 10 plus b, will be equal to p plus q plus 1 in this case, where the fractional parts sum to something greater than 1 on the right hand side. So you'd have p plus q plus this extra 1 that gets carried would be equal to your ab, which is 1b. And then similarly in this other case, when the sum is less than 999 there, we get the sum of the recurring parts is less than 1, so we don't carry a 1, so it is just p plus q equals the ab, or the 1b there. So then in this first case, we can write our original expression as 1b plus cab over 999 equals this, just like before. And once again, now that we know that 1b equals p plus q plus 1, if we subtract p and q, 
we have 1b minus p minus q is just equivalent to 1, which we'll write as 999 over 999. So just like before, we can get rid of our common denominator. We've got 999 equals CAB equals QPP plus QQQ. And now we'll actually use our knowledge of base 10 to expand these expressions and go away from working with digits. So with our hundreds digits, we've got 9 plus C. So we've got 100 times 9 plus C. Then going on to our tens digits, we've got 9 plus A. But remember now A is actually just 1. So we can really replace this A here by a 1. So you've got 9 plus 1 times 10. So just plus another 100 there, 10 times 10. Then we've still got a plus 9 and a plus b. And this is equivalent to, on the right hand side, we've got q hundreds, we've got another q hundreds, so we've got 200 times q. Then for our 10 column, we've got 10 times p plus q. And finally, we've also got p plus q from the units column there. And we know from this case, where we've got 1b equals p plus q plus 1, this really means that 10 plus b equals p plus q plus 1. So then if we get rid of 1 from both of these, we've got 9 plus b is actually equal to p plus q. So we can just cancel the 9 plus b and the p plus q there. And looking at this equation now, you can actually see the left-hand side is a multiple of 100. So in order for this right-hand side to also be a multiple of 100, we would need p plus q is either 0, in which case we just go back to our trivial solution where everything's 0, or more interestingly, we could have p plus q equals 10. So if we've got p plus q equals 10, we'll actually be able to extract some solutions to our problem now. So bearing in mind we're in this case where qpp plus qqq is bigger than 999. Some values of q are ruled out, so you couldn't have q as 1, 2, 3, or 4, because this sum would just be too small. You could never make it greater than or equal to 999. But we could try q equals 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, in which case you would have p, in order for them to sum to 10, would be 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1, respectively. And because we've got p plus q is 10, you can see here then that 10 plus b would be 10 plus 1, so we actually get b equals 1, which is really useful, because now on our left-hand side we know a and b, and we just need to work out what c is. So we can just do this case by case. So first of all, if we start with q is 5, Let's write out our right-hand side becomes 5.555, all recurring, plus another 5.555, all recurring, just because P and Q are both 5. Then we would get, if you add these together, 11.111, all recurring. So here C would be equal to 1. We've got A and B are both 1 as well. So then if we move on to where Q is 6, we'd have P is 4, so you've got 4.644, all recurring, plus... 6.666 or recurring. This gives us on our left hand side again we've got 11 but then we've got c is 3 and a and b are both 1 so we've got 3 1 1 or recurring. Then we get some similar solutions where q is 7 we get 3.733 all recurring plus 7.777 all recurring is now equal to 11.511 all recurring. Then when q is 2 p is 8 so we get this plus 8.888, all recurring, and this would be now 11.711 when you add these two together. And our final one is where C is 9, so you get 11.911 is equal to 1.911, where P is 9, sorry, Q is 9 and P is 1, plus 9.999, which is actually just equal to 10 there. So now we've got five nice non-trivial solutions in this first case where the sum of our fractional parts was greater than 1, where we had to carry the 1. And now in this final case where the sum of our fractional parts is less than 1, we've got this 1b equals p plus q. So this is our original equation again with a is 1, and then you can see the 1b and the p plus q just cancel with each other, and we're just left with these fractions with a common denominator of 999. So we can immediately rewrite this as CAB, which will write as C1B, because A is 1, remember. Then this is equal to QPP plus QQQ. So then if we start to think about what happens when we do the addition here, first of all, we've got 10 plus B equals P plus Q. That's what this one digit means here. 
So let's just write this out. 10 plus B equals P plus Q. So this tells us when we do our units addition, the P plus Q here, we are going to carry a 1 into the tens column there. Of course, we're not doing any addition on the left-hand side. So then when we look at our tens column, we've added an extra 1. So we do P plus Q, but we've also got this extra 1 that we've carried, and this has now got to be equal to 1, or equivalent to 1 modulo 10 in order for this to work, so that we have the same tens digit. So this is telling us then P plus Q plus 1 is equivalent to 1, so P plus Q is equivalent to 0 modulo 10. So you could have the solution P plus Q equals 0, but then this is just P and Q are both 0, and we end up with a trivial solution where everything there is just 0. So we could also have if P plus Q is equal to 10, we'll get something more interesting there. So if we have P plus Q is actually equal to 10, and it certainly can't be equal to 20 because P and Q are both digits, so they're at most 9. So then we've got P plus Q is 10 is the only non-trivial possibility coming up now. So if we know P plus Q is 10, then this tells us, looking at our previous equation here, that B has actually got to be equal to 0. So we've got P plus Q is 10 and B is 0. So at this point, if you notice that we had P plus Q was 10 in the other case as well, I do wonder if there's a more efficient way of directly showing that P plus Q is 10 without having to split into these two different cases. So now we have P plus Q is 10, and we're in this case where the sum of these two has got to be less than 999. So this actually rules out if Q is 5 or above, in which case we'd refer back to that previous case. So we're just left with the possibility that if Q can't be 5 or above, then we're left with Q equals 1, 2, 3, or 4 as our possibility. So we couldn't have Q as 0 because the sum of P and Q couldn't be 10 then. So in these cases where we've got Q is 1, P would be 9, then we'd have P is 8, 7, and 6 respectively. So this is going to lead us to four more solutions now. So first of all, when Q is 1, P is 9, so our right-hand side will become 9.199 all recurring, plus this is just 1.111 all recurring. Then this is going to, when we add these together, we know that A is 1 and B is 0, so we've got 10 and then our C, when we just do this addition, we get C is 3. So then we have C is 3 and A is 1, B is 0. So this gives us one solution in the case where Q is 1 and P is 9. Then if we go on to the case where Q is 2, we get 8.288 plus 2.222, where that's all recurring. This is going to give us 10.510. So C has gone from 3 up to 5. Then we can do the same, go 7.377 all recurring plus 3.333 all recurring. When we do this addition, we're going to get 10.710. And finally, we get 10.910. So C goes up to 9 here when we've got P is 6 and Q is 4. So 6.466 all recurring plus 4.444 again, all recurring. So we get an extra four solutions here in addition to the five non-trivial solutions that we had and also the one where everything was just equal to zero.